in uh, 30 uh, years into this epidemic, unfortunately, in all the front of this uh, uh, epidemic, from Asia to Africa, in Latin America, what we are seeing is a growing inequities. Inequities which is uh, translated into brutality against uh, women. Uh, uh, with uh, mass rapes in uh, many parts of the world, uh, the world with, uh, 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 I can say, the, uh, trafficking, girl trafficking, with uh, also a growing, growing uh, 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 disparities uh, uh, in, in terms of having access to services. Today, just to give you an example, uh, 400,000 babies are born every year in Africa. 400,000 babies with HIV AIDS. It means that uh, amongst those uh, 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 babies which are born, we will have uh, almost 30% uh, uh, of those babies who will uh, die before their first anniversary if they don't have access to medicine. But worse than that one, it means that uh, 400,000 uh, 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 women's mothers have not been uh, checked have not been having access to services, have not been able uh, to uh, at least uh, um, uh, avoid uh, the transmission from mother to child, but also uh, they, will have, uh, they will be at risk uh, to not uh, live with us uh, for uh, uh, the years to come. So for, for us today, what we were trying to do is to make sure that we create a new movement, we mobilize the world around uh, a new urgency, urgency which is about stopping violence against women, urgency which is about making sure that uh, HIV AIDS response uh, will also target more of the access of women to services which are available, and urgency which will call for a new mobility of the leaders in order uh, to reduce uh, the number of uh, new infection amongst the girls. In 2003, uh, in November of 2003, I was invited to take part in Nelson Mandela's HIV AIDS uh, campaign, the launch of his HIV foundation, <clears throat> which is called 46664, after his former prison number. In, and that was really a big turning point in my life because it was through that experience of uh, taking part in the concert and being invited by Mandela to visit Robben Island Prison where he had been incarcerated for so many years with all the other artists where we, ha we all sat in the former exercise yard uh, where Mandela stood in front of his former prison cell uh, addressing a much larger assembly of international press <laughs> and telling them ostensibly in his words that the HIV pandemic was tantamount to genocide. And it struck me that this was a very dark moment, that we have a concept of the anti-apartheid movement and the success of that movement and how hope had been transformed, uh, sorry, despair had been transformed into hope, that South Africa represented that kind of transformation and that Mandela himself personified the, the idea of commitment to and dedication to a struggle that seemed to be impossible. And there was Mandela, you know, standing there telling the world's press about a very, very different situation, but a situation that almost seemed to be invisible at that time, even though this, the fact is that millions of people have already been affected. You know, the pandemic has been around for almost 30 years. But in South Africa, under the... Uh, the presidency of Mbeki, th there were not enough things done to address a very, very, very urgent chronic endemic situation. And so many people who could have had access to treatment did not. And many mothers who could have still been alive to take care of their children were not here anymore. And those children are left with the circumstance of being orphans, perhaps bringing themselves up or for, uh, perhaps landing in some kind of institution if they're lucky. So for me, as a fairly well-informed in, uh, Western woman, and a mother primarily, as a, I'm a woman, I'm, I'm a mother. And so thinking about that and thinking that actually, why didn't I know that the African AIDS pandemic uh, had killed so many people, really? And why didn't I know that mo many of them were women? 
and that actually women were at the face of it now. Women are the face. Women are the profile now. It has changed so much. I was involved in AIDS activism in the 80s, and at that time we were very clear. It was intravenous drug users, sex workers, and the gay community. The gay community organized itself incredibly well, and if it were not for those efforts, perhaps uh, in the West we would, wouldn't have the same kind of access to treatment and medical care as we do now. But as I say, as a woman and a mother, going into a country where I actually saw the reality, the face, the human face of the HIV pandemic, in southern Africa particularly, where you have one of the highest instances of the virus, one of the highest in, uh, instances of infection, um, it struck me as being a very dark moment. The rainbow nation has inherited something that is um, invisible in a way because of stigma. And stigma runs from the very top echelons of society all the way down to the poorer uh, people who, living in townships like Kailicha or in f remote rural areas in the Eastern Cape. Um, when I had had that experience and I'd understood the severity of the situation, I felt it uh, very onerous upon myself as a woman to speak up to speak up for the people that I have met in townships, in orphanages, in clinics, in their own homes and hospitals. I've met many people subsequently and I've really understood that for them, they very often don't have a voice. I work very closely with a organi grassroots organization in South Africa, which has a, a spread all across the country. They are called Treatment Action Campaign. And they have mobilized and activated so many ordinary citizens who have been either infected or affected by the virus. And um, I must say I'm very proud to be a member of TAC and to stand in solidarity with them. So when I'm talking with you and wearing this T-shirt, which was actually uh, in created by the founder member, Zaki Ahmad, um, I w I've been trying to think, how can we get the message across especially to people in the Western countries, so that they can understand that AIDS has not disappeared. HIV has not disappeared. It's still here, and it's very, very strong. I was told, and I hope that this statistic, well, I, don't, I wouldn't wish this statistic were true, but I believe that it is, and it's a very tragic one, that there are as many African-American women living in the Washington, D.C. with HIV as there are in the country of Rwanda. So, you know, we need to, people to understand that. Uh, two years ago, when I was in Mexico City at the International AIDS um, con oh, my brain. Conference, thank you. <laughs> you must understand I'm a little jet lagged. <laughs> <laughs> I met, I went with Oxfam, uh, as I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for Oxfam, and we went into the head offices in Mexico City, and we sat with about 25 women from across uh, Latin America, housewives, sex workers, ordinary women, whatever, daughters. We sat with them. They were all HIV positive. When I asked them, how do you think you were infected? Almost everyone said, my husband. Now this is really something that we have to understand. That when we feel that we are in a very safe position uh, as a married woman, that actually it might not be so. That there are many misnomers about HIV. And when we think that we are safely out of that, or we are not the kind of people that that might happen to, the tragedy is, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Young women of reproductive uh, health, uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. Women of uh, reproductive age are actually at the forefront of, of risk in the HIV AIDS spread. They are the ones that need to be addressed. And I think part of this wonderful launch today, which is so, so, so significant. And it's funny, you know, I sit here, and this is huge, and this half the hall is empty, and I ask myself the question, where are the rest of the media? Where is your concern? Where is their concern for this? It's not strong enough. People have been fighting for this for years, and maybe with the launch of this report, we might start to really get a foothold in bring, bridging that gap between those invisible women and children who are suffering with HIV or the full-blown full effects of AIDS. They have to be able to have an opportunity to have a voice. 
They have to be able to come out of the shadows, and we must represent them. Human rights for women, human rights for children, international human rights, and access to universal treatment must be what we call for. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been great to, to be in the launching of um, this operational plan from UNAIDS, and I would like to highlight that um, as a woman living with HIV, I do have um, a lot of experience um, regarding my sexuality, which is, I think, um, I've been limited mostly by the society, actually, because not just me, and it's not just me who's, who's coming from, from uh, Asia. I believe uh, women and girls living with HIV in any countries in this world will have the same stories that, you know, a lot of them, we will still ha listen that, we will still he hear that they are not allowed to have intimate relationship and they're not encouraged to be married. They're not allowed to have children, which is, in, in my opinion, the, this is wrong because um, regardless our status, regardless my status, HIV positive or not, I have the full right of my sexuality. Sexual and reproductive health uh, rights is my rights and women's rights regarding, uh, regardless of uh, their HIV status. And um, I do believe that if this operational plan that we launched this morning is implemented at the country level. Um, gender inequality between men and women will be uh, slowly vanished. And uh, it is very important for women to be empowered, especially uh, HIV positive women, to be empowered, to be able to put themselves in an equal position with men and with the support of men as well. And um, it's not, and, and women, it's not just um, shouting out about equality, but also prove themselves that they are actually an equal partner to men. Um, that is the basic uh, that I feel uh, for all women in this world, and especially for HIV positive women, to move forward um, in regards of um, bringing out their, their, their voice.